Hey everybody, welcome back to the RGR Football Channel. My name is Daniel Harms. Today we have a new film room for you guys. We're going to go over one of the bubble players that made the roster. Our fan favorite, really, Doris Fountain, did make this 53-man roster. We talked about it yesterday. Yes, I am able to do a film review without thinking that the player should have made the roster. That's perfectly okay. And I promise you it's not going to impact the evaluation. We're going to do lots of fun stuff right here with his tape that he put on the first two preseason games. That's all I have right now. So I'm doing with, with it what I can. So if you're not, make sure you hit that sub button, a like thing. It would help Ryan and I out so much getting us out there for everybody else. That algorithm is so picky about likes. So I really do appreciate all of them as videos go through. So, and if you really want the, that, that, that bell notification gets you guys noticed every time we do a video. So if Ryan went live earlier this afternoon, you would have gotten a notification on it from in your email. So hit that. If you want to get updated to the second of when we ever do videos and when they're released. So there's a few things that I want to talk about before we get into the film. And I noticed as I was doing some research on his playing time in the preseason, he didn't play very many special team snaps, which tells me a couple different things that I don't think that he's the sixth man, the sixth wide receiver on this roster. I think that's Kemp because he's playing more special teams. He's going to be on more special teams roles in the regular season. And Fountain is kind of almost like the guy right before him in terms of how I think that the wide receiver room shakes out. We're going to see if that, that holds true as the regular season comes on if Kemp gets more playing time at all based on you know garbage time things like that but just they, they were they wanted to see him on the field not really caring about special teams so much just as a receiver that tells me that they really think that he can do something on this roster if the opportunity presents itself or in case of injury which I think is huge for the team going forward considering the wide receiver depth outside of Tyree Kill is not exactly what you would like it to be or what it has been in the past I think people missing Sammy Watkins right now, even though he didn't play a whole lot anyway. Uh, that talent dip is, is is kind of steeper than I would have thought it would be at this point. I thought they would have addressed it a little bit better with drafting and things like that, but that's neither here nor there. So we're going to talk about Doris Fountain, what he brings to this team, what he can offer in case he's on the field more than I anticipate. So let's go ahead and jump in. So right off the bat, we are going to talk about a, a key third down play in any real situation. You've got Fountain up here at the top of your screen and man-on-man -man coverage, short third, what, third and fourth, five-ish almost situation. These pop up every single week and they trust him to make the play here. But I want to watch, want you to watch this over again. So you can actually see it properly. The the catch and then the hit over the middle of the field. That's what I want to focus on really quick because these little tiny idiosyncrasies in the manipulation of the route itself is, is what I want to talk about. He's going to sell it upfield and slightly to the outside. That's going to move this outside shoulder right here ever so slightly to the field side, to the sideline part of the field. And if you just watch that closely, it does just enough to create the separation that you're looking for in this route just enough to really do that um it does just enough to create that separation over the middle of the field for him to catch that football so i really liked seeing him hang on when the linebacker is coming at you like that um it's a really good read by the linebacker to see that that ball is coming over the middle of the field and Fountain does a good job of maybe he doesn't know he's coming, but he knows he's going to get hit because coming over the middle field, you're always going to get hit, especially in third down situations. They typically like to line them up in the middle like that and try to make sure no one can catch the ball for a first down. So as defenses adjust, we, we've seen different rules come into play with wide receivers. You know, pretty much the defenses receiver thing is almost because going over the middle of the field, you can really get clobbered few years ago by some of these safeties and linebackers. So it's a good job by Fountain to know that he's coming over the middle of the field and to essentially brace himself, catch that football, make the first down, and yeah, basically not get hit too hard because he was able to really kind of get hit where he was cradling the football and the that didn't do too much damage to him. So I liked seeing him be able to do that. It was a, it was a nice little clip from that game here and now we're going to see him up at the top of the screen again on this side and when 
I was watching Dory's Fountain. A lot of the things that I had talked about originally with him, I think, remain true. I think that this is one of those plays that utilize his strengths. He definitely has a much better tracking eyes and mind and ability to adjust in the air than a lot of the Chiefs receivers do. I don't necessarily think that he's an incredibly twitchy athlete. I don't think he's going to give you a lot of yak potential. But this is what it he really does well, I think, is he uses the sideline pretty well. He understands where he is in regards to the sideline. He uses the space he has to his advantage. And, you know, Anthony Gordon here does a very good job of understanding that he's in a one-on-one -on -one situation, that he can get this ball to Fountain on the outside shoulder here and let him adjust to it. That's, at the end of the day, you're utilizing the skill set this player has. I'm, I'm hoping that Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes, as he's become more comfortable in these offenses, maybe he has a little bit more leniency, and they use players like Fountain and Demarcus Robinson and Jody Fortson, whose big bodies can shield themselves and, and defensive players from the ball, and they can use some of these back shoulder throws. I really, really want to see this implemented more in the offense itself. It's a good changeup because Andy Reid loves to scheme players open. And this is one of those things you can identify that coverage pretty quickly, especially if you have a smaller guy on a, a Dory's Fountain or a Demarcus Robinson. You can throw that back shoulder fade and let him just go make a play on the football. That's that's ideal for me. And I really like being able to see him go and do that. The adjustment in the air is something that we see a lot from guys like DeAndre Hopkins and Devontae Adams. I'm not obviously comparing him to them, but the quarterbacks use that kind of throw because it's perfect for the player's skill set. They know that they're selling the deep route. The corner doesn't know that, and the quarterback themselves can get that ball to the outside, especially where there's more room to work and let them adjust to the football. And I just, I like seeing that a lot more. And I think Fountain can bring that to this offense. If Andy Reid loosens Mahomes a little bit and lets him be more in the moment type of player, identifying that coverage and throwing it to the, the sideline and letting, letting the receiver make the play. Ball skills are still kind of important in football, and sometimes you just have to let it happen. Fountain has a 42 and a half inch vertical. Just let him go get the football. Like, that's all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking. So, on to the next play up here at the top of the screen once again. And you're noticing he's pretty much been on the outside a lot. They're not going to use him a whole lot in the slot. And that's just because he's much better there. A more physical type of guy who can use his body to his advantage. And I, th I think Fountain does a, a pretty decent job of using his skill set to his advantage as well because let's be honest with you I'll, i'm gonna be honest I, I don't think that he's like i said i don't think he's an incredibly twitch athlete but this right here is what you want to see from not only you know the quarterback understanding space when given but a guy who's still pretty fast he runs a four five no just uh, just under four five at his pro day at university of northern illinois uh, northern northern iowa and you have to understand as a, a bigger guy who doesn't necessarily run great routes. We don't really know. I didn't get a whole lot of feel from his the couple of preseason games of what the Chiefs are comfortable with him running. They didn't ask him to do, to do a whole lot. So I think he's probably, a, you could still have run some over routes, some crossers, things like that, just kind of get him where he's not having to make Tyreek Hill type of you know, cuts and things like that. Just use those big bodies, the longer strides and the long speed that he has to his advantage. But this here shows a good, pretty, a, a good understanding of selling that deep route, understanding you've got that cushion and using all of that to your advantage and having some nice hip sync and foot and foot speed to get down to that hitch route right here. And, you know, get I'm nearly a first down off of it, which is really what you want to see. So it's a really good job of both, like I said, understanding that, that cushion, seeing it unfold and, and, getting the, your hips down right there and get into the the route it's a, like i said it's a it's a very nice uh, a nice change up from what he's doing a lot of the times in these games where he's just running down the field um so yeah i like to see a little bit of that as well um right here is almost a play off of again more deep routes that he's running he's down here at the bottom of your screen 
but this is something I really liked to see because I didn't see a whole lot of it on his uh, on the tape from the, these two games, and I was hoping to see more in the Minnesota game, but I didn't get a chance to, like I said. Um, so this is really what I like to see from wide receivers on the outside. You have to be able to manipulate corners in the NFL. You have to. If you can't, they're just going to be able to keep with you the whole time. So just watch him as he manipulates the corner here. Uh, we'll just kind of run that back through. So you can actually see it um, right here. The corner is coming up field. So he sells it to the inside and comes back to the outside. That's really what you we, what we like to see um, from these receivers in this point. So this is what I'm talking about. So you can see right here, this corner playing zone coverage almost essentially because you're seeing he's already opened up to the inside, Nick, telling you that he's not playing man coverage. He's not letting you ma making the receiver go to the sideline. So what does Fountain do? He goes with him. He's going to kind of move himself upfield to the inside slightly. Sell that deep route and then cut back to the outside on this out route, which is really nice manipulation tactic to use. With a corner, you, you, you know is just letting you go upfield. So, like I said, does a very good job of feeling this whole process out and <clears throat> excuse me, getting to the, the out route which is nice to see from him. It's a, it's a very good change up for, you know, a, a guy his size who doesn't have that twitch in his hips that you want to see. So my apologies. This is where he is right here. We'll kind of cut that back real quick after this goes through, just so you can see all the way, but up at the top of the screen. All right. This is the one area of his game that I'm not hugely a fan of. And like I said, I, I'm not sure if he can run routes. I don't have much of that on tape, but I know he can run some. So his his route tree isn't huge, but I think that there's enough there that you can really get something out of him. But this is where I struggle with him because, I mean, let's be honest, you're not going to see press coverage every time. You're not going to see man-to-man -man coverage every single time. So you're going to have to understand where to sit down in zones. You're going to have to know a bunch of different things about that. So playing against press coverage is very different and you don't want to open your chest too much you want to be able to be quick with your hands use a lot of different releases and that's something he also does not have a lot of he doesn't have a lot of releases in his game but his physicality i think it, it can get to the point where he slaps corners hands away quicker and under and realize sees it quicker because right now it's just not as fast as you want to see it from uh, from Fountain, which is, you know, he said it's he's not a starting caliber player, and there's reasons for that. And this being one of them is that he just doesn't get off of the press quick enough. He's just a little late with his hands. He does he does try. He just tried to get upfield, and in the process, he's unable to create that separation that you want to see from receivers. And so, yeah, Fountain himself does does struggle with contact at times. I think that's one of the only real struggles that I saw on his tape from the preseason. I uh, didn't, like I said, there wasn't a whole lot to go off of. He didn't get any playing time with Mahomes, So it was, it was a little bit difficult to garner a whole lot from, from his time there. But here he is down on the bottom of the screen. And one thing I think you can really garner from his, from his game is that, yeah, he's going to use that body of his and really try to use his length to to win catches and win balls downfield because he doesn't create a whole lot of separation. But what he does try to do is use that offhand right here to create some separation. I don't think that the the hitch in his route did him a whole lot of good, but he does have some speed to get downfield and using that offhand to kind of create some separation is is useful and here the ball placement just just out of his reach he's unable to really do anything with that and it's, it's unfortunate he doesn't un, not able to bring this this catch in but it's a good job of working it down a field um he's really more of a vertical threat type of guy i don't think that he is gonna have a whole lot to bring to the offense in the short to intermediate in now this is really where the one thing like I just mentioned, I think that he's going to bring to this team is if he gets on the field, you can count on the Chiefs letting him go down the field a whole a whole lot. And right here, that deep catch against the Cardinals is what I want to really focus on. It's not 
a whole lot, but it, there's something here. I want you to just notice real quick. It's hard to see. I know I'm going to do my best to spell it out for you. Right now, Fountain is already looking at the quarterback, okay? And the corner is lo looking for him. His shoulders are towards the sideline. So this is a great position for Fountain to be in going down the sideline. So we're going to go ahead and keep going through it. And what you notice is that he creates some separation. Um, and I want to show you exactly how. I'm going to show you in the route itself. So when he starts to look for the, the ball, the corner starts to look for it too. And that's what he's able to create here in this separation. Because that split second where the corner gets himself turned around trying to find the football, he blows right by him because he's still accelerating. He knows the quarterback's leading him. And I think that he's got some of that downfield presence. You can use this kind of ability. He's, I think he's got really good eyes, and you can manipulate corners that way a little bit by kind of looking backward already and making them slow down slightly because in order to process where the football is, a lot of corners, they will slow down. And if they're not in front of you or if they're right by you, you can blow by them. That happens a lot. So this is an area that I think Fountain can exploit, and he does a good job exploiting it on this play right here. A lot of fun watching this play play out with that eye manipulation and then being led by Bouchelle down the field. That was a, a nice play from him overall. So I really liked being able to see that. So to really wrap everything up, I think Fountain did more on, on tape than I, I initially thought he did. I don't think that he, you know, exploded onto the scene. I think that that's pretty reasonable to assume. But I also think that from what I garnered from the tape, and the fact that they let Marcus Kemp go, they they see more of a wide receiver role for him in this team, which that's obviously what you want from any anybody. So I'm interested to see how it plays out throughout the season. And if he gets on the field, just expect a lot of deep shots. If he's getting targets, they're going to be down the field. I think that's where they can actually use his skill set. And I'm hoping to see him prove me wrong. I, I've said this a bunch. If I'm not high on somebody, I always want them to prove me wrong because that gives me an opportunity to improve as an evaluator. You know, it gives me an opportunity to see what he's doing that's being able to be utilized by this offense or what the Chiefs see that I don't. So I want to see him do well so I can go back, watch his tape, self-evaluate, and get better. So I'm hoping to see him being used in a variety of different ways and going down the field. I think that's a huge part of this offense and it's going to come back this year with the chiefs offensive line. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Yeah, remember, make sure you guys tune in Thursday for another live stream with Ryan and, and Seth. We're going to have more stuff popping up for you guys. We have some guests coming, be able to look on the lookout for that. Those are going to be a lot of fun and yeah. So just have a great day and go chiefs. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR Football.